What's going on guys? Alex over there at 14 EDC and today I have a little video um, about a knife that I recently got over the weekend on a road trip um, to a family vacation. Uh, some of you guys may have seen my uh, reel that I did a couple days ago on Thursday um, when I stopped in at Case Knives and the Zippo Museum in Bradford, Pennsylvania uh, again on Thursday and uh, yeah I picked up a knife and I added to the collection a Sodbuster Jr. Um, I, you know, so I'll start by saying this, and I've said this in a few videos recently. I am not the biggest traditional fan in the world. Um, I have one in my collection, my Jack Wolf Knives Venom, but I definitely can appreciate them. And there are certain ones that I like and think look good. Uh, I have always been attracted to the sod buster pattern um, just with that kind of that bull nose blade um, i went with the yellow synthetic material uh, from case which is uh, kind of a historical sort of um, material used in blades they've been using it in handles for i think over 100 years and so something just really drew me you know to this model um, i also kind of consider you know this yellow synthetic material kind of like the early days ultim um and yeah i know it's you know case knives aren't like the most flashy knives in the world but my my family and i went up to the finger lakes uh went to Watkins Glen, and uh, over to ithaca we were there from a thursday today's monday I, we just got back a couple hours ago um so you guys will probably see this on monday i'm gonna try to get this film to bang out uh for you guys it's not gonna be a super long video but we went out for the you know finger lakes region for a couple days and had a great time if you guys saw some of my reels i did on uh the waterfalls and stuff up there just beautiful region beautiful you know basically we did wine uh you know we're going to wineries going to waterfalls just a really nice relaxing um, awesome weekend highly recommend the area if you guys are you know considering going up there we can't wait to go back and just explore more about it but when we left on thursday uh we went up and made our way up through bradford which bradford pa is about two hours from where I grew up, um, always known about it, but it's just, you know, in the part of the state to where I'm never going up there for anything. I have never had, it was actually the first time I'd ever been in Bradford. I've just never had any reason to go there, but I knew that the case, you know, uh, store was there. They make case knives there they make Zippo knives there or Zippo knives, Zippo lighters there. So I knew on my way up, I wanted to stop and add something to my collection. Uh, and I was pretty excited. I'm not going to lie. Like they have a beautiful museum and a beautiful storefront. Um, cause for those that know, and you know, for those of you that don't know, Bradford PA is not very big. It is just a small little blip on the map. Um, and they had a very, very nice, you know, uh, you know, very clean, very modern uh, storefront. Uh, they had half of it with Zippo and then half of it with case knives. And it was cool just wandering around. We were in there for probably 20 minutes, 25 minutes, half an hour, something like that. Um, it was just cool to wander around and just to look at all the models. Uh, they had a, a case with their bridge. Uh, I think it's the Longhouse and the Bridge Line series, which are two of their most recent uh, modern folders they've come out with. One is a front flipper and one is like a double detent model. And then they had a whole case of the, you know, the Kinzu. Um, they had like all their other modern folders in a case. And I was very tempted to get one of the modern folders because you guys know I tend to gravitate more towards modern folders and, and newer blade steels and, you know, stuff like that. But I've heard, you know, kind of a lot of hit or miss things about the quality control from case with like a lot of the newer stuff so i figured you know go with the tried and the true they've been making sod busters and you know traditional slip joints for you know over 100 years um and i just thought you know having something like this would be a little bit more uh you know more of a heritage knife more of what their true calling is so that's why i went with the sod buster and again i just really like the yellow synthetic it has this nice nice brass pins uh there's this case xx in USA right there. Um, this is their, what's it called? Uh, their True Start, True Sharp Stainless, which is apparently, um, it's a, it's a special high carbon steel that helps the blades hold an edge longer than conventional steel. Um, I know it's probably not, you know, S90V or S35VN or things like that, but uh, they've been, again, making these knives for years. 
And uh, I'm just really stoked to have one in the collection. Uh, you guys will obviously get a full review on this, but I just wanted to stop in and kind of show you guys uh, my blade pickup, you know, when we went on vacation. My dad picked one up too. It was uh, a lockback knife. It had a clip point blade, kind of like some blue denim micarta. I'm not 100% sure of the name on that, but it was a, a pretty cool knife. And uh, it was cool to see him add to his little collection too. And, you know, you know, uh, he kind of wandered around as he asked me, you know, what I liked and stuff like that. And I was, you know, he landed on that one and, uh, you know, I thought it was a good option. So again, I don't know the name of it. Uh, maybe I'll have to do, you know, a review on it sometime when uh, I'm home and I can, you know, do a little bit, a little bit of filming on it. But yeah, so I just wanted to, again, stop in, you know, showcase the knife to you guys, <laughs> kind of do like a, not really an unboxing, but just show off the knife and to let you guys know I now have it in the collection. And uh, again, there will be a full review coming on it soon. Um, but yeah, I didn't want to make this a super long video. Uh, so we're about six minutes right now. So I'm going to wrap this up, but let me know down below. Do you guys have any case knives in your collection? Uh, I'm sure, you know, I know a lot of people have case from like their dads or their grandpas and they've handed it down. Cause again, it is, you know, such a historical knife company. Uh, and I'm just glad to have, you know, a piece of, you know, knife world or, you know, yeah, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I'm just excited to have a piece of the knife world history in my collection as well as PA history. Um, I'm really wanting to add a Great Eastern Cutlery uh, knife in my collection now because, you know, they're made in Titusville, PA, which is 25 minutes from where I grew up. I'm very, very familiar with the area. I mean, I've been playing sports there all, my whole life and um, just uh, it's it's basically from where I'm from. Um, so I definitely want to add one of those to collection, but that's a story for another day. So I'm going to wrap this up now, but uh, let, you know, thank you guys. What's what I'm looking for. I was going to say something, but then I slipped my mind, uh, but let me know down below. That's what I was trying to say. Did any of you guys, you know, do any of you have a lot of case knives in your collection? Do you have a whole case knife collection? Um, let me know. I would love to hear you guys have to say, but I'm going to wrap this up now. So thank you guys again so much for watching. I greatly appreciate each and every single one of you guys. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your morning, evening, day, night, whenever you're watching this. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.